always enjoy reading articles or books for that matter by Chris Hedges so I thought I would read this article that he published today called The Empire is Not Done with Julian Assange. As is clear from the memoir of one of his attorneys Michael Ratner, the ends have always justified the means for those demanding his global persecution. Ah, come back. There we go. <clears throat> Princeton, New Jersey. That's where Hedges lives. Post on Sheer Post, reposted here on Mint Press. I'll link it down below. As is clear from the memoir of one of his attorneys, Michael Ratner, the ends have always justified the means for those demanding his global persecution. Shortly after WikiLeaks released the Iraq War Logs in October 2010, which documented numerous U.S. war crimes, including video images of the gunning down of two Reuters journalists and 10 other unarmed civilians in the collateral murder video, the routine torture of Iraqi prisoners, the covering up of thousands of civilian deaths, and the killing of nearly 700 civilians that had approached too closely to U.S. checkpoints. The towering civil rights attorneys Michael Ratner and Lynn Weinglass, who had defended Daniel Ellsberg in the Pentagon paper case, met Julian Assange in a studio apartment in central London, according to Ratner's newly released memoir, Moving the Bar. It's a book I'd definitely like to get. Sanj had just returned to London from Sweden, where he had attempted to create the legal framework to protect WikiLeaks servers in Sweden. Shortly after his arrival in Stockholm, his personal bank cards were blocked. He had no access to funds as it was dependent on supporters. Two of these supporters were, were women with whom he had consensual sex. As he was preparing to leave, the Swedish media announced that he was wanted for questioning about allegations of rape. Women who never accused Julian Assange of rape wanted him to take an STD test. They had approached the police about compelling him to comply. Quote, I did not want to put any charges on Julian Assange, texted one of them on August 20th while she was still at the police station. But the police were keen on getting their hands on him. She said she felt railroaded by the police. Within 24 hours, the chief prosecutor of Stockholm took over the preliminary investigation. He dropped the rape accusation, stating... I don't believe there's any reason to, su to suspect that he has committed rape. Assange, although not charged with a crime, canceled his departure and remained in Sweden for another five weeks to cooperate with the investigation. Special Prosecutor Marianne Nye was appointed to investigate allegations of sexual misconduct. Assange was granted permission to leave the country. He flew to Berlin. When Assange arrived in Ber Berlin, three encrypted laptops with documents detailing U.S. war crimes had disappeared from the luggage. Wow. No, I hadn't heard about that till now. We consider the Swedish allegations a distraction, Ratner told Assange, according to his memoir. We've read the police reports and we believe the authorities don't have a case. We're here because, in our view, you are in much more jeopardy in the U.S. In the U.S., uh, Len can explain why. Sanj, Ratner recalled, remained silent. WikiLeaks, as you pers and you personally are facing a battle that is both legal and political, Wineglass told Assange. As we learned in the Pentagon Papers case, the U.S. government doesn't like the truth coming out. Ain't Ain't that the sad truth? And it doesn't like to be humiliated. No matter if it's Nixon or Bush or Obama, Republican or Democrat in the White House, the U.S. government will try to stop you from publishing its ugly secrets. And if they have to destroy you in the First Amendment and the rights of publishers with you, they are willing to do it. We believe they are going to come after WikiLeaks and you, Julian Assange, as the publisher. And Ratner has proved completely, completely right, unfortunately, in that... Very somber assessment. Come after me for what? Asked Julian. Espionage, Wineglass continued according to the memoir. They're going to charge Bradley Manning with treason under the Espionage Act of 1917. We don't think it applies to him because he's a whistleblower, not a spy. We don't think it applies to you either because you're a publisher. But they're going to try to force Manning into... Excuse me, implicating you as his collaborator. That's why it's crucial that WikiLeaks and you personally have an American criminal lawyer to represent you. And Hedges was recently on the Mint cast, or Mint Press News podcast. Ratner and Wineglass laid out potential scenarios. 
The way it could happen, Ratner said, is that the Justice Department could convene a secret grand jury to investigate possible charges against you. It would probably be in, the North, in Northern Virginia, where everyone on the jury would be a current or retired CIA employee, employee or have worked for some other part of the military-industrial complex. They would be hostile to anyone like you who published U.S. government secrets. The grand jury could come up with a sealed indictment, issue a warrant for your arrest, and request extradition. What happens if they extradite me? asked Julian. They fly you to where the indictment is issued, Wineglass told Assange. Then they put you in some hellhole in solitary and you get treated like Bradley Manning. Chelsea Manning, no. They put you under what they call special administrative measures, which mean you probably would not be allowed communication with anyone. Maybe a lawyer could go in and talk to you, but the lawyer couldn't say anything to the press. And it's very, very unlikely that they would give you bail, Ratner added. It's easier to extradite. Is it easier to extradite from the UK or Sweden? Asked Sarah Harrison, who was at the meeting. We don't know the answer to that, Ratner replied. My guess is you would probably have the most support and the best legal team in a bigger country like the UK. In a smaller country like Sweden, the US can use its power to pressure the government, so it would be easier to extradite you from there. But we need to consult with a lawyer who specializes in extradition. <clears throat> Sanders, British lawyer, uh, also at the meeting, proposed that Assange return to Sweden for further questioning. I don't think that's wise, Weinglass said. Unless the Swedish government guarantees Julian will not be extradited to another country because of his publishing work. The problem is that Sweden doesn't have bail, Ratner explained. If they put you in jail in Stockholm and the U.S. pressures the government to extradite you, Sweden might send you immediately to the U.S. and you never see the light of day again. It's far less risky to ask the Swedish prosecutor uh, to question you in London. And then here's the book by Ratner I'd really like to get. My life as a radical lawyer, moving the bar. And kind of a pun as well, you know? Because <laughs> the bar exam to become a lawyer. I wonder where that is. Ah, gotta get that book. The U.S. government's determination to extradite Assange and imprison him for life, despite the fact that Assange is not a U.S. citizen and WikiLeaks is not a U.S. based publication, Ratner understood from the start will be unwavering and relentless. And he's unfortunately been completely correct in that. And the 132-page ruling issued today in London by Judge Vanessa Baratzer, Baratzer, Baratzer of the Westminster Magistrates Court, the court refused to grant an extradition request only because of the barbarity of the conditions under which Assange would be held while in prison in the U.S., Faced with the conditions of near total isolation without the protective factors which limited his risk at Her Majesty's prison, prison Belmarsh, I'm satisfied the procedures described by the U.S. will not prevent Mr. Sanj from finding a way to commit suicide, said Barrett, sir. And for this reason, I have decided extraditing or extradition will be oppressive by reason of mental harm and I order his discharge. Assange is charged with violating 70 counts of the Espionage Act, along with an attempt to hack into, government, into a government computer. Each of the 17 counts carries a potential sentence of 10 years. The additional charge that Assange conspired to hack into government computer has a maximum sentence of 5 years. The judge ominously accepted all of the charges leveled by the U.S. prosecutors against Assange, that he violated the Espionage Act. Espionage Act by releasing classified info and was complicit in assisting his source. Chelsea Manning in the hacking of a government computer. It is a very, very dangerous ruling for the media. And if on appeal, and the U.S. has already said it would appeal, the higher court is assured that Assange will be held in humane conditions. It paves the way for his extradition. Publication of classified documents is not yet a crime in the United States. If Assange is extradited and convicted, it will be one, which obviously would set a very hugely dangerous and destructive precedent. I mean, forget a free press at that point. Anybody all over the world anywhere in the world could basically be charged you know under this espionage act for exposing the crimes of the u.s empire through their work in media and publishing and that should send a chill down everybody's spine 
The extradition of Assange would mean the end of journalistic investigations into the inner workings of power. It would certainly cement into place a terrifying global corporate tyranny under which borders, uh, nationality, and law mean nothing. Once such a legal precedent is set, any publication that publishes classi classified material from the New York Times to, to an alternate website, such as Mint Press News, will be prosecuted and silenced. Again, the stakes could not be any higher if Assange is extradited and then convicted on these charges. Hedges is completely right. Assange has done more than any contemporary journalist or publisher to expose the inner workings of empire and the lies and crimes of the U.S. ruling elite. The deep animus towards Assange as fierce within the Democratic Party as the Republican Party and the cowardice of the media and watchdog groups such as Penn, not sure what Penn is, have to look into that, to defend him mean that all he has left are courageous attorneys such as Ratner, activists, excuse me, who protest is outside the court, and those few voices of conscience willing to become pariahs in his defense. Ratner's memoir, which is a profound courage of the many dissidents, including Assange, he valiantly defended, is also a profile of courage of one of the greatest civil rights attorneys of our era. There are few people I respect more than Michael Ratner, who I accompanied to visit Assange when he was trapped in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. His memoir is not only about his lifelong fight against racial injustice, rising corporate totalitarianism, and the crimes of empire, but is a sterling example of what it means to live the moral life. Wow. I mean, if Hedges is, you know, so eloquently singing the praise of, you know, Michael Ratner's book, um, it's definitely it got to be a must read, in my opinion. Assange earned the eternal anonymity of the Democratic Party establishment by publishing 70,000 hacked emails belonging to the DNC uh, yeah, and senior Democratic officials. The emails were copied from the accounts of John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. The Podesta emails exposed the donations of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Qatar, Qatar, and identified both nations and major funders of Islamic State, ISIL, ISIS. It exposed $650,000 that Goldman Sachs paid Hillary Clinton to give talks, a sum so large it can only be considered a bribe. They exposed Clinton's repeated mendacity. She was caught in the emails, for example, telling the financial elites that she wanted open trade and open borders and believed uh, Wall Street executives are best positions to manage the economy, a statement that contradicted her campaign statements. It exposed the Clinton campaign efforts to influence the Republican primaries to ensure that Donald Trump was the Republican nominee. And look, how, look how that turned out. They got what they wished, but the, they didn't end up winning. They exposed Clinton's advanced knowledge of questions in a primary debate. They exposed Clinton as the pri principal architect of the war in Libya, a war she believed would burnish her credentials as a presidential candidate. Again, hugely, hugely disastrous for the Libyan people. Literally, this war, this intervention in Libya has brought back slavery to the country. It's disgusting. Democratic Party, which routinely blames Russia for its election loss to Trump, charges that the Podesta emails are obtained by Russian government hackers. Hillary Clinton has called WikiLeaks a Russian front. James Comey, the former FBI director, however, conceded that the emails are probably delivered to WikiLeaks by an intermediary, and Assange has said the emails were not provided by state actors. Journalists can argue that this information, like the war log, should have remained hidden, but they can't call themselves journalists, for sure. Any good journalist would be standing up for Julian Assange and silence from the corporate media is deafening. But again, if Assange is extradited to the U.S. and convicted under these charges, there it's, it's fair season and everybody after that. So it's really to, to the media's own detriment that they're not standing up and, and raising hell about this. A few weeks after Ratner's first meeting with Assange, WikiLeaks published 220 documents from Cablegate, the U.S. State Department's classified cables that Chelsea Manning had provided to WikiLeaks. The cables have been sent to the State Department 
from U.S. diplomatic missions, consulates, and embassies around the globe. The 251,287 cables dated from December 1966 to February 2010. The release dominated the news and filled pages of the New York Times, The Guardian, Dar Spiegel, Le Monde, and El Pais. The extent and importance of the Cablegate revelations took my breath away. Ratner, who died in 2016, wrote in his memoir, They pulled back the curtain and revealed how American foreign policy functioned behind the scenes, manipulating events all over the globe. They also provided access to U.S. diplomats' raw, frank, and often embarrassing assessments of foreign leaders, some of the most stunning revelations. 2019, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton ordered U.S. diplomats to spy on U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and other U.N. representatives from China, France, Russia, and the U.K. The information she asked for included DNA, iris scans, fingerprints, and personal passwords. U.S. and British diplomats also eavesdropped on U.N. Secretary General Kofi Annan in the week before the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq in 2003. The U.S. had been secretly launching missile, bomb, and drone attacks on terrorist targets in Yemen, killing civilians. But to protect the U.S., President Ali Abdullah Salah Salih told General David Pedras, we'll continue saying the bombs are ours, not yours. Saudi King Abdullah repeatedly urged the U.S. to bomb Iran's nuclear facilities to cut off the head of the snake. Other leaders from Israel, Jordan, and Bahrain also urged the U.S. to attack Iran. The White House and Secretary of State Clinton refused to condemn the June 2009 military coup in Honduras that overthrew, electedly president, uh, overthrew elected President Manuel Zelaya, Zelaya, I think, ignoring a cable from the U.S. Embassy there that describes the coup as illegal and unconstitutional. Instead of calling for the restoration, restoration of Zelaya, the U.S. supported elections orchestrated by the coup's leader, Roberto Micheletti. Opposition leaders and international observers uh, boycotted those elections. Employee of a U.S. government contractor in Afghanistan, DynCorp, hired Dancing Boys, a euphemism for child prostitutes to be used as sex slave. I mean, Jesus Christ. In various cables, Afghan President Hamid Karzai is called an extremely weak man who did not listen to facts, but was instead easily swayed by anyone who came to report even the most bizarre stories to plot against him. Argentine President uh, Christina Kirchner Kirshner and her husband, Nestor Kirshner, the former president, are described as paranoid. President Nicolas Sarkozy of France is described as thin-skinned and authoritarian. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi is called feckless, vain, and ineffective. Perhaps most important, the cables that Tunisian President uh, Zine El Abedin Ben Ali had lost touch with the Tunisian people and described high-level corruption, uh, scalaritic scal regime, and deep hatred of Ben Ali's wife and her family. These revelations led to the eventual overthrow of the regime in Tunisia. Tunis uh, Tunisian protests spread like wildfire to other countries of the Middle East, resulting in the widespread revolts of the Arab Spring of 2011. Secretary of State Clinton said after the release of the cables, Disclosures like these tear at the fabric of the proper functioning of responsible government. Attorney General Eric Holder announced that the Justice Department was conducting an active, ongoing criminal investigation into WikiLeaks. Then U.S. Rep. Candace Miller, Republican Michigan, called WikiLeaks a terrorist organization. Former GOP Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich called for WikiLeaks to be shut down and Assange treated as an enemy combatant who is engaged in information warfare against the United States. Again, we see it's on both sides of the aisle. Clinton, Gingrich, Holder, and then now with the Trump administration going after him. And do we really think Biden will pardon Assange? Don't have much hope for that, do you? For those who ran the American empire, the truth hurt, Ratner writes. For the rest of us, it was liberating. With the 2010 release of the Collado murder video, the Afghan war logs, the Iraq war logs, and Cablegate, WikiLeaks went far beyond tra traditional investigative reporting. It proved that in the new digital world, full transparency was not only possible, but necessary in order to hold governments accountable for their actions. 
On November 30th, 2010, two days after the initial release of Cablegate, Sweden issued an Interpol red alert, no red alert notice normally used to warn about terrorists. Ratner goes on. It also issued a European arrest warrant seeking Assange's extradition to Sweden. Since he wanted only since he was wanted only for questioning about the sexual misconduct allegations, it seemed clear from the timing and severity of the warrant that the U.S. had success, successfully pressured the Swedes. The efforts to extradite Assange intensified. He was held for 10 days in solitary confinement, another form of torture, at Wandsworth Prison before being released on bail of £340,000. He spent 551 days under house arrest forced to wear an electronic anklet and check in with police twice a day. Visa, MasterCard, Bank of America, and Western Union refused to process donations to WikiLeaks. Excuse me. It became virtually impossible for anyone to donate to WikiLeaks, and its income immediately plummeted by 95% Ratner rights. But none of these financial institu institutions could point to any illegal activity by WikiLeaks, and none had imposed any restrictions on WikiLeaks' Um, any restrictions on WikiLeaks mainstream co-publishers? Financial blockade applied only to WikiLeaks. Ratner was soon spending several days a month in England conferring with Assange and his legal team. Ratner also attended the trial at Fort Meade in Maryland for Chelsea Manning, then Bradley Manning, certain that it would illuminate how U.S. government intended to go after Assange. Prosecutors in the Bradley Manning case revealed internet chat logs between Manning and an unnamed person at WikiLeaks who they said colluded with Manning by helping the accused trader engineer reverse, a reverse password, he writes. Without supporting evidence, prosecutors claim the unnamed person was Assange. Both Manning and Assange denied it. Nonetheless, it was clear uh, that what Len and I had predicted was happening. The case against Bradley Manning was also a case against WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. The two were inextricably linked. Manning was charged with 22 violations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice and the Espionage Act, including aiding the, aiding the enemy, which is like, that doesn't make any sense. None of this does, obviously. It's a complete bullshit, all of it. Taxpayer dollars hard at work. Which carries a possible death sentence, wrongfully causing intelligence to be published on the internet and the theft of public property. Property could get over. I couldn't get over the irony of it all. Ratner writes, "On trial was the whistleblower who leaked documents showing the mur the number of civilians killed in Iraq, the collateral murder video, Reuters journalists being killed, children being shot. To me." People who should be the defendants were the ones who started the Afghan and Iraq wars, George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, the officials who carried out torture, the people who committed the very crimes that Bradley Manning and WikiLeaks exposed, and those who should be, uh, uh, be observing were the ghosts of the dead Reuters journalists and the ghosts of the children other killed, others killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, that is really telling, isn't it? Going after... The people who exposed the crimes of the U.S. empire while saying or doing nothing for the people who committed these ghastly, disgusting crimes against humanity. I mean, for God's sakes. week after Manning's arraignment, WikiLeaks published an internal email dated February 26, 2011 from the private intelligence firm Strategic Forecasting, Stratfor. Ratner goes on. Part of a trove of 5 million emails that the hacker group Anonymous obtained from Stratford servers. It was written by Stratford Vice President Fred Burton, former State Department counterterrorism expert. It clearly stated, We have a sealed indictment of Assange. Please protect. Another of Burton's emails was more vivid. Assange is going to make a nice bride in prison. Screw the terrorists. He'll be eating cat food forever. The depravity of these people knows no bounds, does it? <clears throat> the emails revealed how far the U.S. government would go to protect its dirty secrets and how, it'd be, how it would use its own secrecy as a weapon, Ratner writes. Somehow, Stratfor, which has been called a shadow, a shadow CIA, had information about this sealed indictment that neither WikiLeaks, Assange, nor his lawyers had. Jeremy Hammond was sentenced to a maximum of 10 years in federal prison for the Stratfor hack and leak. He remains imprisoned. He should also be, obviously... Um, you know, pardon completely. 
On June 14, 2012, the UK Supreme Court issued its verdict affirming the extradition order to Sweden. Sanj Cornered was granted political asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he would remain for seven years until British police in April 2019 raided the embassy, sovereign territory of Ecuador, and placed him in solitary confinement in the notorious high-level security HM prison Belmarsh. I mean, what Julian Assange has been subjected to through exposing the crimes of the U.S. Empire through through WikiLeaks is, again, just a testament to how much he really cares about the truth, about people knowing the crimes of this government and, and others. And again, he deserves so much respect for the price that he has paid and continues to pay for that great service to the world. The, re the arrest eviscerates all pretense of the rule of law and the rights of a free press. The illegality is embraced by the Ecuadorian, British, and U.S. governments in the seizure of Assange were ominous. The presage, presage a world where the internal workings, abuses, corruption, lies, and crimes, especially war crimes, carried out by corporate states and the global ruling elite will be masked from the public. The presage a world where those with the courage and integrity to expose the misuse of power be hunted down, tortured, Subject, subjected to sham trials and given lifetime prison terms in solitary confinement. They presaged an or Orwellian dystopia where news is replaced with propaganda, trivia, and entertainment. Under what law did President Ecuadorian President Lenin Moreno capriciously terminate Julian Assange's rights of asylum as a political refugee? Under what law did Moreno authorize British police to enter the Ecuadorian embassy, diplomatically sanction sovereign territory to arrest a naturalized citizen of Ecuador? Under what law did Prime Minister Theresa May order the British police to grab Assange, who has never, who has never committed a crime? Under what law did President Donald Trump demand the extradition of Assange, who is not a U.S. citizen, and whose news organization is not based in the United States? As a journalist and publisher of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange had every right to asylum, Ratner writes. The law is clear. The exercise of political free speech, including relevant government crimes, misconduct, or corruption, is internationally protected and is grounds for asylum. The U.S. government has recognized this right, having granted asylum to several, several journalists and whistleblowers, most notably from China. Last paragraph here. My view is that mass surveillance is this... This is a key, key point here. My view is that mass surveillance is not really about preventing terrorism, but is much more about social control, Ratner writes. It's about stopping an uprising like the ones we've had here in the U.S. in the 60s and 70s, and the ones we've seen happen, you know, during the Black Lives Matter movement as well. Shook me that Americans are passively allowing this and that all three branches of government have done nothing about it. Despite mass surveillance, my message for people is the same one that Mother Jones delivered a century ago. Organize, organize, organize. Yes, the surveillance state will try to scare you. They will be watching and listening. You won't even know whether your best friend is an informant. Take whatever security per precautions you can, but do not be intimidated. Whether you call it the sweep of history or the sweep of revolution, in the end, the surveillance state cannot stop people from moving forward the kind of change that will make their lives better. Chris Hedges. A true, true gift. Not many, not many like him out there, are there? Empire's not done with Julian Assange. Whew. Again, just, yeah, just... Corporate media, if Assange is extradited eventually and charged and convicted coming from the new they'll be coming for the new york times next the guardian all these other you know corporate media outlets that report on issues of national security and the, and the u.s empire to their own detriment they're not even saying anything right now and probably don't even realize it frankly Kudos to WikiLeaks. Kudos to Julian Assange. Subscribe for more content.
Peace. Much love. All power to the people.